par by his standards against Northwestern. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing for, for Justin Fields. I, I think anybody who's watched him play has a lot of confidence in what he can do. I've been told he's had laser focus week. Trust to last year's game when they just bolted out of the gate. Fields at one loss as a starter. Second best to Lawrence among active quarterbacks. The thumb was the issue against Northwestern. He has a little bit of a brace on that hand. We saw it in the pregame warm-up. And there's the play Kirk just showed you that gut-wrenching interception to end the season. He threw two in that game, only had one all of last season. Two tight ends, Farrell and Rucker in the game. It's Fields running all the way, running into heavy traffic, and he stopped her ball came out. The ball was on the ground, Skalski and Spectre combining, and it's a three and out for Ohio State. Really good job by the linebackers, Skalski, Spectre. Watch Spectre work around the block by Ruckert and then puts his head right on the football. Football is out, but Jeremy Ruckert sees it and, and he missed the block, but he's able to get down and get that football before Skowski can get to it. Yeah, bad news is he missed the block and they're excellent blocking tight ends, but yeah. at least he prevented the turnover. It came up and they went three and out. Let's see what they do in this second possession. Fields looking to throw for the first time. Launches across the middle and there is Olave, the reliable target who makes the catch first down to the 34. Olave tapped in the shoulder two days before that game and Indian told you're out. He had 18 catches in the two previous games. He was hot. Trying to bring pressure on Fields, looking to throw on first down, checks it down to Sermon, who's got space, and a first down, and is still running, hurling men out of bounds inside the Clemson 35. That's his biggest play as a receiver all season. Well, he sneaks out of the backfield, and he checks it down. Nobody picks Sermon up. They brought Skowski on a blitz. Nice job by the offensive line picking him up, and now you got Trey Sermon out in space, much like we Whoop. talk about Travis Etienne. <laughs> Nice. He did that. He did that in a Big Ten championship game. He got, he's got elevation. He tried it the first time and got tackled. The second time he just took it up. Buckeyes once again take over down seven. Fields keeps it and Knights quickly diving forward for a first down. Trey Sermon and Justin Fields make you respect that. See Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis, part of that interior line. Fields from the pocket launches downfield and a diving catch is made. Garrett Wilson got deep and hauled it in. A beautiful adjustment midair. Buckeyes at first and goal. Well, Garrett Wilson can do this. He can get downfield. He has such tremendous ball skills. He against Kendrick one-on-one. -on -one. He gets behind him. Great job off of the play action. Move the safety to the middle. Creates the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And how about the accuracy and the adjustment? Fields puts it up in the air. Allows Wilson to adjust the goal attempts. Second and goal back from the 10. They shift the tight ends to the right and now a flag. It's a false start. It'll back him up to the 15 now. The last thing you need against the Venables defense false down start. here. Offense number 55, five yard penalty. Still second down. That's Matt. On second and goal, Fields scans, pump fakes, and just takes off. Field makes a cut, slides down. He started the slide at the seven. That's where they'll spot him. It'll be third and goal. Third and goal now. Field from the pocket, fires to the end zone, into traffic, caught for a touchdown by Luke Farrell. Didn't have a catch the last three games. First touchdown of the season, and a touchdown in a tight window as he beat Kendrick, their best corner. You know what, watch them work. I wish I could draw there with you, but you have to watch 89 who works to the outside. Look at 88 right in the middle, wide open if he throws it, but instead he goes to the outside and gets the ball to the big guy, Farrell. Again, 6'6", six, six, matched up against about 5'11", a corner. That's probably why. Nice little push back to the inside, almost like you're just rebounding a basketball. But the big man comes down with a catch, and the Buckeyes tie it up. I was going to say, that's like a power forward, kind of boxing out a two-guard. <laughs> yeah. And that ball was thrown precisely. Doing it, seeing the field, making good decisions early in this game for Ohio State. Looking to fire far side, long throw, and Olave darts for a quick first down. A year ago, inside, it's very painful for him, memory. It was a first down catch by Wilson. He was. Sermon continues to run with that edge, that anger that he was known for early in his career at Oklahoma. Field looking to launch downfield. He's it for a lobby just over.
over his hands. He had his man beat inside the five. And, and that time, Fields just not quite enough air underneath that one. Fields, with some confusion at the snap. No flag down. He darts forward. Yeah, Brent Venables does not want to see Tyler Venables, his younger son, on a lobby. Very Also, Ohio State, they need four. Tigers crowding the line, and they pull back. Fields has time. Over the middle. Catch made. First down. Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, the freshman, moves the sticks for the Buckeye. Man who after the Northwestern game. Kind of a quiet season for a five-star. Fields fakes out the defense and rolls and has some yardage and still running. Knifing through defenders, lowers the shoulder. It's a first down inside the red zone. Farrell on a nice block. You know, if you're going to cover everybody downfield, you better be careful because Fields is not just going to run out of bounds. Rucker 88 does a nice job picking up a block. You also see that, again, the freshman Smith and Jigma, he picks up a block. And then there's the natural running ability of Justin Fields. I think he's really in, in, within himself trying to play not just well, but out-duel Trevor Lawrence tonight to show people how good he is. Got to be careful with that mindset, though, don't you? Drops back. There's a man wide open. It's Rucker. Two touchdowns for the Buckeyes tight ends tonight. They've been quiet for the second half of the season, but not tonight. Chris, he's off to the left and just and with all the action going left. Look at the tight end off to the left. He's just going to hide. He's waiting with the action. Roll. See how he just kind of hides, waits for everybody to move over. Nobody picks him up. He just kind of waited, waited patiently. Action rolled left to of the offense. He sneaks out to the right. Linebackers never saw him. It the only incompletion was when he missed Olave open deep. It's Wilson motioning back to the left side. Fields rolls to his right, puts in the flat, and again, it's the tight end Farrell. It's a short gain. Ryan Day and the Ohio State offense is doing. You don't see Clemson's defense like this very often. Play action on second down. Long throw. Olave's got the catch, and he's got a first down. Kirk, anything to do with Nolan Turner, the secondary yeah. like not being in there. A lot of credit coming into this game, trying to mix it up. There's easy access, and Jamison Williams comes back, makes a hands catch. The goal, some damaging penalties on defense, aiding Clemson touchdown drives. Very determined start. Lance that defensive line. For C, that big 300 pound wrecking ball in the middle. What a freshman season he's had. Here they come. Oh, dropped out. Third and 13. Fields does have time. And now takes off, makes a cut, hits a hard hit by Skalski, who knocks him down two yards short, and Fields is still down. Uh, he took that shot right in the ribs on the right side of his, right in between, the, the, it looked like the rib cage and maybe the back part of his ribs. Again, a, a, big, a big quarterback that can do a lot of damage to a lot of teams when he runs, but 47, a physical tackler, Hits him short of that first down and lowers the boom there. Skalski plays with a memory of his dad who told him when he was a young player, son, when you hit him, make him feel you. Now, Skalski was ejected for targeting from the championship game a year ago. Talk about different fuel. That's provided him fuel just in the midsection of fields. who was still being looked at. I hope it's just having the wind knocked out of him. I, is Bill, I'd like to ask Bill, I, and again, Bill, the, the, the targeting call that, that Chris just referred to, he did lower his helmet there for the, the uh, crown of his helmet. Yeah, uh, they just your, stopped the game for yeah. the review. Yeah. He does I, have I the crown think, of the helmet down. Yeah. Forcible that's what contact. I, I see a targeting call here. Yeah, that's what I, th I thought you might jump in there. You know, two subplots. Fields, is he okay? Can he continue? Finally help to his feet. And what about the fate of Skalski? As you point out, Kirk, he's the defensive quarterback of that front seven already without Turner for the rest of this. After further review, number 47 was confirmed for targeting. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Number 47 is disqualified. Be surprised if he stays in more than a play based on the way. Well, maybe he is. Oh, there we go. I thought Justin Fields had a look in his eye like getting a drink of water. He wasn't going to be out very long. Now he's showing some toughness there. I, I, I bet he's not pain free at the moment, but he's not going to no. let that stop him. This is crucial now as the Buckeyes try to stretch the seven point lead. 
Fields on the run, launches for the end zone, coming back, caught for a touchdown by Olave! And the Buckeyes stretch the lead, and Fields kind of limping to the sidelines, still not right, but delivered a strike. Wow, you, you talk about guts. Justin Fields showing that right now. That was a big hit that he took from James Skowski. Goes out for one play, comes back in, makes a great throw to Olave. How fitting that he finds Olave for a touchdown in the corner. Very reminiscent of Matt. That was a statement play, Kirk. You're exactly right. Gets up, finds Olave, who eludes Sheridan Jones, and then limps to the sidelines. But it's Ohio State up by a couple of scores now as we approach halftime. In pain, but in front by two scores. Justin Fields walking to the 10 in obvious pain. The shot delivered by Skowski. He's ejected for targeting Fields out for one play. Comes right back in and fires a strike to his favorite target to go up by 14. Two minutes before the break. Fields steps up and took a brief look downfield, then took a big hit from Balin Spector again. Slow to get up. You know, Ohio State on third down. It's been a time Chris, out. Wa watch Fields instead of doing what he's done most of tonight. He just kind of gives up on the play because of that injury. And he's just getting down. You know, I mean, he's been a he's been a tear for this defense to have to contain with his legs. But now after that big hit, you can see he's not even trying to fight for yards. He's just trying to avoid being hit. He just went down. Down for Ohio State. Now Fields from the pocket again took a look downfield, just checks it down. And it's Sermon in heavy traffic able to weave his way inside the Clemson 45 to a semifinal game. Playing with tempo, Tigers barely set this time. Field steps up, dumps it down. Sermon again has another first down inside the 40. How to adjust for the second 30 minutes. Fields lost it downfield way over Olavi's head. Now just 27 seconds in the half. They still have the two timeouts, but not in field goal range at the moment. But you wonder if that's in Ryan Day's head. Fields delivers a strike across the middle. It's Rucker. And the tight end bangs down inside the 15-yard line. Tight end's a huge part of the attack tonight. Boy, he gets this ball thrown right in front of Xanders. Watch the middle linebacker. Spectre comes. He opens up, but almost. Xanders gets a hand on it, but instead it's the big fella. They came from 16 down, of course, last year. No panic on the Clemson sideline, but Ohio State trying to add to the lead here now. Well, he spread it around. 15 completions, seven different receivers. Makes it tough on the defense. From the pocket, a strike across the middle. Caught. Touchdown. Rucker again. What a huge night for the tight ends and for Fields. Watch Farrell work, Chris, to the inside and take the defender right over the middle of the field with him. Now Rucker kind of gives an outside look. I'm telling you, he's like a receiver, even though he's 6'5", 250. The top tight end that came out of high school football his senior year does a nice job. And because of Farrell took away the, the safety, Charleston, it opened it up. And every time Field steps and throws, he's feeling that pain on the right side of his uh, his body. But he's also playing with a lot of determination. That fuel from the loss a year ago, the two interceptions out in Glendale, the doubters, the skeptics. He is really in a rhythm and a good flow. Nice balanced attack by Ohio State. Fields looking to throw at plenty of time. Down the middle of the field. Olave wide open. Takes a hit. But the Buckeyes are threatening in the red zone again. 
They go trips into the boundary, continues to cause confusion. Watch him work from the outside to the middle. Nobody runs with him to the middle of the field. Not Kane Patterson. There wasn't a safety. Mike Jones didn't go with him. So trips into the boundary. Nobody finds Olave, their most gifted receiver. He's all alone, and Fields finds him. Making it tough on Brent Venables and his defense to get their own rhythm established. Third and eight. Hunt fake. End zone thrown. That's a mistake. And an interception by Mike Jones. Fields forced that one into traffic. And it's the first takeaway for the Tiger defense. Much needed. Chris, I think Miles Murphy may have got his hand on this ball and affected that ball kind of was floating out of his hand. Watch 98, a little bit of a stunt up front. Right before he throws it, right there, I think on his follow through. I think he got his, see that ball kind of floating on him? I think that ball's either out of bounds or it's it's in the back line. Instead, he, it, the ball kind of flutters on him on that volley. Yeah, my, he did, in fact, get his hand on it. And then all of a sudden, the sideline, the guys in orange, has some life. Looking to throw on first down. Fields has plenty of time. Now retreats, tries to direct his receivers and has to just throw it away. There was nobody open. Eventually, Murphy got there to pressure him. Tigers don't bring pressure on third one. They drop into coverage and Fields again looking for someone. Checks it down to Sermon. Can he get there? Yes, it's a first down. Out across the 20. Well, that is a great He's job. still running. He's still running. Is this going to be shades of what we saw from Michael Dyer and Auburn? The signal is touchdown. On the field, they signal a touchdown. Did he stay up? Did he land on the defender? Wow. What a huge call this will be. He came down on Kane Patterson. I thought maybe his left knee touched, but he must have stayed on top of the body. Of course, they'll review it. He wasn't running, and the sideline says, go, go. Yeah, there's Kane the Patterson comes in. The See if his the elbow touched. Not being down. Oh, yeah. The elbow looks like right there. Oh, absolutely, he's down with the See elbow. See the rest of the... I thought the that left knee game. may have touched. Let, let, let's see. Uh, he's on Patterson right here. The left elbow, or the, the elbow's down. Let's yeah, the elbow puts him down. Yeah. And yeah, then the knee touches as well. So take the touchdown off the board, and Goodrich After has been knocked review, down. The runner is down back. at the 23-yard line. It will be first and 10. Please reset the game clock to 7.01, please. 7.01. Uh, Trey, he knew he was down. He said, I'll take the touchdown if you're going to give it to me, but I know I was down. Sermon back in on second and ten. Four-man rush. Fields has time. Launches downfield. It's Olave. He's got a touchdown. Ohio State. A deep strike, and the Buckeyes stretch the lead again. 56 yards. Wow. Great patience by Justin Fields. He went all the way from the right and came all the way back to his left to find the defense out of position. And then he shows you the arm strength downfield. Olave, this play took a while. I mean, it, the offensive line does a good job. Look how he gets behind Nolan Turner. I don't know if they thought he could make that throw, Chris. Watch Nolan Turner, the back end of this. Right at the 50-yard line, kind of working towards the middle. He takes that crossing route, opens it up for the post, and then Justin Field shows you the arm strength and the accuracy to make that throw where he gets behind Kendrick and Turner. That midsection might be hurting from that shot from Skalski, but he just torqued that core around, heaved it downfield. They're able to kind of find that consistency by only playing six. They were fresh, but not fine-tuned at all coming in. Big pressure blitz, and they sack Fields on third down. That time, Venables brought the house, and it was Brian Brissy there to knock down the quarterback, fourth down. Well, he's lined up over the right tackle and twists all the way around. And with all the, watch him over the right tackle, he comes all the way around and comes free because of the pressure from the safety and backers occupied Trey Sermon. So he comes free, miscommunication up front, and the big fella, Brzee, comes up with a big sack on third down.
coaching them. They still have a lot of talent led by the two interior players. Got a first round pick at quarterback and Fields is back at it, flipping on the far side there. I don't think they go into any kind of slowdown. I think it's the same kind of tempo. They throw Next again. Catch by Smith and Jig, but not. Chris, you mentioned Justin Fields trying to get on the exercise bike. Really, he hasn't sat down much since taking that hit. He's trying to stay warm as much as possible. The one time that he stopped was to check in with his offensive line. He hit everyone's hand and said, 15 more minutes. Give it all that you've got. But he's staying up, trying to stay warm, has a lot of padding on that right hip and trying to really gut out this last quarter. He's been gutting it out. And he has not had a plate of beignets at halftime, Desmond Howard style. That is the padding you see under that jersey that was not there at the beginning of the game. So rewrite the ending means close. They got 14 minutes to protect this lead. Looking to add to it. Fields down the field. Caught for a touchdown. Jamison Williams make it five touchdowns for Fields tonight. And the Buckeyes can smell it. A 45-yard strike. And Fields is delivering a performance that's going to live forever in Ohio State history. This is truly really special tonight. See Nolan Turner, both safeties. I talked about Venables needing to roll the dice a bit and being aggressive. It means leaving those corners on islands. This time it's Sheridan Jones against the fastest receiver on the Ohio State roster, Jamison Williams. Again, I, I talked about how Brent Venables down late like this is going to have to leave his corners on island. Safety's up early down. You're expecting run. And instead, Ryan Day shows you how determined his team is and how much confidence he has in Justin Fields. Jamison Williams matched up one on one with Sheridan Jones. No safeties back to help. And they hit another big one. He's been an 80 percent passer. Pressure that time and misfires Luke Farrell. Ohio State facing a third and four. Fields from the pocket against the four-man rush, lofts it into traffic, and going up to trying to make a catch was Sermon. Victory formation for the Buckeyes. Pure muscle up front. They dominated the game in the trenches. The second quarter was decisive. The score was even in the first, third, and fourth, but that 21-zip edge for Ohio State when their defense clamped down on Lawrence, and they scored three touchdowns. That is the difference tonight. First time they beat the Tigers in the five meetings. Very few Ohio State fans able to witness this. Get about half of the 3,000 tickets. Everyone here tonight on their side will savor this memory forever. But our character showed through. You mentioned uh, character. You mentioned the gutsy play of a guy named Justin Fields. And even after taking a hit, he sets a Sugar Bowl record for passing touchdowns. Just describe the play that you had from your QB today. No, I can't. I mean, what he means to me, I, I can't put it into words. The amount of time we spend together, for him to come out and play the way he did, after so many people doubted him nationally, he takes a big hit. He looked me in the eye. He's like, there's no way we're losing this game. Chris, Justin, let's start with Let's start with something simple. How satisfying is tonight? I mean, tonight, uh, I really can't explain, the, you know, the feeling. Uh, I just want to give all, all my thanks to God. I mean, without him, uh, I'd be nothing. We'd be nothing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know, blessed, blessed. What kind of pain did you have to manage throughout this game after the hit in the second quarter? Yeah, Being honest, I mean, Justin. Yeah, that, that, hit, that hit really took a toll on me. I mean, my ribs were, were, were killing me pretty much all game, but uh, what, what pushed me through was the love for my brothers. I mean, I would do anything for these guys, so I'm, I'm just, just so proud of everyone. The, the fact, Justin, that you lost to this team a year ago, how did that fuel you in this performance tonight? You know, I, I think that loss kind of fueled our whole offseason. It, it really fueled our whole season, so, uh, you know, that loss really pushed us in the offseason even more. So. We were just glad to get this opportunity back to, to be able to play these guys again. And of course, Clemson's a great team. They, they played a hard fought game. A message to anyone who would suggest that this is the 11th ranked team in the country. I'm not even a comment about that. I'm just glad we won. Well done. Appreciate it. Congrats. So no big surprise. Let's start with the offensive MVP of the Sugar Bowl, Justin Fields. Justin, pick up your trophy there, Justin. It's close to you. That's it. That's the one. Justin, when you when you look at 
the last play from the Clemson game last year and how that drove you. What impact did that have on your preparation and your performance tonight? Yeah, I mean, after that loss last year, I, I think it fueled our whole team in the offseason workouts throughout practice, you know, fall camp. So I'm just proud of my brothers and, and proud, proud we got the dub. How difficult was it for you to stay in the game, keep playing after that huge shot you took? Yeah, I took a big shot in the uh, first or second quarter, but um, what, what really kept me going was, was my brothers and the uh, love for them. I mean, I do, anything, they, I, I do anything for these guys, and I just love them. Just love them. You guys have talked about rewriting the ending. Six touchdown passes tonight, yeah. but yet still another chapter to be written. Yeah. How do you envision the last chapter, the final ending being rewritten? I don't know how it's going to end, but I do know one thing, that we're going to go out there and play our butts off, play our hardest, so, yeah. Justin, congratulations. Just a remarkable performance. Thank one you. of the best in Sugar Bowl history. One of the best in the storied history of Ohio State. Ohio State defense, this is fitting. It took a team to raise that heavy trophy tonight, and it took everyone, all three phases tonight, to get the job done for the Buckeyes. Kirk, your perspective, watching from afar and doing a great job from Nashville tonight.